you've ever been at a competition, you kept missing the same piece of steel over and over and over, no matter how many times you pull the trigger or tried to readjust your aim. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is absolutely uncontrollable. As much as I've tried, um, I found that I'm just going with it at this point. I'm being held ransom against my will by the comment section. Gentlemen, if you're looking to support the channel, the best way to support the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. Um, they, you get super cheap prices on air teams and all that kind of stuff and gear and ammo and whatever you want. So get in there and get that stuff. Uh, it is definitely worth it. 99 cents for the first month. Link right below. If you guys are looking for ammunition, LAX ammo, and if you guys are looking for a sick computer, Orbital Computers, they have recently supported me uh, by giving me a new computer for editing. It was much needed. Uh, so we give them a little shout out and thank Orbital Computers for their help. They make sick gaming computers right here in the US. Uh, of course, the great warranties and stuff. So if you're computer illiterate like me and you need somebody to make them, they are your people. So get in there, check out the comment section for a link right to them. Gentlemen, ladies, and of course, my not gone, not forgotten, 1897 trench shotguns from World War II. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting firearm, one that you might have thought I've already talked about, and that is the T-36, not the G-36. So the T-36 is from Tommy Built. Tommy Built makes domestic, that means U.S. produced, G-36 clones. Pretty cool. He makes anything from a K to the C version here. He also makes X and M8 clones as well. Lots of very cool things. He's been getting a lot of traction recently due to the quality of his work and many other things. Also, there's not a whole lot of guys doing these conversions or completely making these receivers in the US. So every part is US made. So a pretty cool little thing he's got here. So um, I bought this um, probably about a year ago, I wanna say maybe a little bit less, but I bought it because I did that video uh, that video on the G36 um, with James Williamson, who is like the foremost H&K expert. So I did that video with him, and I loved his G36 so much, I wanted to do an exact replica clone. Um, this one is pretty close to what he had. I have a couple um, things I've changed on it from his, just as far as my own ergonomics are concerned and that type of thing. But for all intents and purposes, it is very close. So... For most people, having a G36 is just not an option um, due to import laws and NFA and all that bullshit. Um, it's very hard to get. So it's with that in mind, I want to do a video on a more easily um, obtainable firearm. That's a G36, which is the T36. So let's talk about it. Now, before we do, um, a couple notes here. First off, what is my relationship with Tommy built? Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, this gun was not given to me for free. No, the ammo is free. I bought this gun of my own volition um, just because I wanted to have one. I've just wanted a G36. The ammunition is provided for by LX Ammunition, um, and that's as far as that goes. All the parts were sourced by me. I will say that he did give me a sick deal on the B&T rail out front here, but um, all the other parts are sourced by me um, from great guys who uh, just are in the know and were able to give me some cool things. So let's do what we always do in these videos and let's go tip to butt on this fantastic firearm and let's talk about it, about my uh, issues I've had with it and about some good things about it. So let's get into it. All right, so starting tip to butt like we always do with every firearm, we've got the muzzle device. The muzzle device is a four prong, pretty short, does an okay job at flash suppression. This is, of course, the standard muzzle device on the G36C. Now, um, as far as mounting other things, that is definitely an option. Um, for me personally, I wanted to keep this kind of mostly kind of G36-ish. I didn't want to throw like a, a war comp or anything crazy on there, although it might in the future. Um, so this works fine. Now, I do realize that if you do have a muzzle device on here, that accepts a suppressor, that if your suppressor significantly increases back pressure, that that could damage the system. Um, these were meant to be worked, used with NATO spec ammunition. Um, it's kind of a, the downside to this is that it doesn't work very well with a suppressor, unless you have like a flow through suppressor like the OSS or something along those lines. Otherwise, definitely be careful. Talk with Tom from Tommy Belt and make sure that your suppressor is going to work um, on this whole system. It's not like an AR where it kind of just deals with it and just gasses you out and gives you lead poisoning. Um, these are a little bit different. So definitely check that before you do it. 
The barrels, so these are just a smidge over nine inches on the G36C, um, shorter than the Mark 18. They are nitrided, uh, these are phenomenal. I've had great accuracy from the Tommy Belt um, barrels. So no issues when it comes to those. They're one in seven, um, which is a typical twist weight at, uh, rate that I use. Now, a lot of people say with the one in seven that you can't stabilize the lighter ammunition. Um, I've been using 55 grain with no problem when it comes to uh, the one in seven twist. So I don't know, I don't think it's so much an issue. Don't freak out too much about it. All right. Now these barrels do get hot very fast. So understand that when you're firing this thing, you're probably gonna wanna have a glove on here, otherwise you're not gonna get the love. Or you might get the love from the barrel, but you're not gonna like it very much at all. Uh, for my Marines, that's bad. Uh, remember, wear the glove or you don't get the love. Especially 29 palms. <laughs> okay, uh, moving forward, this is a short stroke gas piston system. So compared to your typical Mark 18, uh, let's see, Mark 18, okay, that's not a Mark 18. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, here we go. So compared to like your typical Mark 18, uh, which is a DI system, uh, you're gonna have a slightly different recoil impulse. So DI, uh, direct and pigeon, or internal gas piston, whatever the fuck you guys wanna call it for uh, you know, my nerds out there, um, is a really smooth uh, system to run. Uh, it does, however, of course, deposit a lot of fouling around the bolt carrier group and that type of thing. A lot of people don't like that. Stroke, short stroke gas piston systems are definitely cleaner on the bolt carrier group and bolt carrier. Um, they do impart typically a little bit more recoil. However, I found that the uh, recoil impulse from the G36 to be roughly comparable to what you get from a Mark 18. So uh, the best way to describe it would be a sniff but, <laughs> stiff but long. Uh, it feels like a very smooth, but you definitely get that push back into you. Overall, uh, if I were to have like a 9.3 or a 9.4 inch AR, and I shoot it like I shot this thing, I think that the AR would probably likely recoil a little bit more than this thing does. So I think this does a fairly good job of taming the recoil given the uh, system that it has right here. Okay, moving from the short stroke gas piston is a very reliable system. G36 is a reliable firearm. Um, the T36 is as far as their reliability, ability to be used in uh, you know, combat or, or, or for what have you. Um, we'll talk about that more, but um, for now, let's stick to the gun. Uh, we have a B&T rail out front here. This is what James Williamson had on his gun and what I really wanted to have on mine. So uh, it is a good rail. I think there are other better ones out there nowadays. Um, actually, Tom just came out with a really cool rail which mimics kind of the look of the MP7, has a foldable, foldable uh, vert grip. Uh, it's actually a really cool design with M-Lock on the side. I'm actually probably gonna be installing that on my rifle soon. So I think that there are other options that for now I had the uh, railed uh, BNT grip, BNT handguard, it works fine. As far as the sides here, I have a light on one of the Haley offset um, mounts with a uh, air Sokka on the other side of the Surefire. Um, pressure pad, it's not the best. I originally had a cloud defensive up here, but I found that I like to wrap my thumb up top and Gucci C clamp that bitch. And uh, you know, I ended up inadvertently uh, activating the light when I didn't want it to, boop, boop. So I moved the pressure pad back to this side. And what I end up doing is I just kind of squeeze my palm um, to activate it. And it seems to work pretty good so far. So we'll go ahead and we'll stick with that. I, I'm sure that there are better um, you know, setups, I'm sure you guys have them out there. I'm sure my German guys are gonna hop in here and be like, nine, and you know, come out the better design. I don't know if that's how German talk, German stock. Anyhow, moving back, uh, let's talk a little bit about the charging handle right here. So the charging handle is very interesting. If you're not familiar with the charging handle on the uh, G36, it is a, um, it's kind of cool. So it is reciprocating. So when you fire, it reciprocates. Now, however, the handle is in the up position. So it's going to be, uh, moving back and forth as so as you're firing. Um, if you need to actuate it, you can reach up top here. You have this little dong right here. Now, everybody loves the dong, especially my Marines out there. <laughs> so you can get that and you can use that to charge the weapon. Now, if you need it to get into place, you need to use it for whatever reason. If you fold it to this side, you can push it in and it locks into place. You use it as a forward assist or to more easily actuate it. And once it's locked, if you release it, it's just going to go ahead and flip right back into place. It's a pretty nifty overall. I like how easy it is to get from either side so both my lefties and righties can use it. And I'm actually left-handed, although I shoot right. So as a kind of semi-pseudo left-handed man, I actually appreciate that quite a bit. 
Okay, moving back from there, we have the lower receiver. So the lower receiver, if you look at this, is definitely different from what is typical. The lower receiver that I have here is a kind of experimental one. Well, not experimental, he makes it. Tommy makes this lower right here that accepts AR triggers and AR safeties and AR grips. So if you know anything about me, you know that I like my shallow grip angles on AR. So I really wanted to have this compared to the normal one. The normal one is fine, there's no issues there. But I really wanted to try out, uh, you know, a fucking Geisley trigger on this bad boy. So I have a Geisley trigger on this. Um, I think it's a super dynamic combat that I have on this one. Um, Geisley triggers are phenomenal. Uh, with, you know, ghosting this is just like ghosting AR. Now, what is different from the AR to this one is that the trigger um, is a little bit further forward than you're used to. So your kind of pull with your finger is a little bit different. But in any case, let's ghost the trigger on this bad boy. So starting right here. I put a little bit of pressure into it. God, I fucking love Geisy Trigger. So you have, that's nice. You have maybe about a millimeter or two of play and you have a crisp break around 3.5. Just perfect. I love these triggers so much. Um, reset on these are just phenomenal. It just wants to come forward. Right there, just barely letting pressure off. Geisy triggers are phenomenal. The G36 trigger itself is pretty terrible. So the one that it comes with, not terrible, but it's a G36 trigger. So it's a spongy, mushy, um, military break at about 5.5 pounds. Precisely like uh, the ones you'd see on the G36 video. No difference there. <sighs> they work and I did use them and they do function well. It's just, I think that there are, um, I like kind of pushing the platform a little bit. Now I will say, that I have had a couple weird malfunctions with this. Specifically, I think I've outran the trigger or perhaps I had some uh, bad ammo, but I had a couple times where it didn't reset. Um, I need more time on it before I can really say what the cause of that was. Um, more than likely me, I'm kind of the harbinger of bad luck when it comes to guns and we'll talk more about that with this poor thing. Um, this is SBR, by the way, in case you guys want to try to report me to the FTA, ATF. You f so uh, moving from there, let's talk a little bit about the magazine release. So on the G36, you have a paddle magazine release. That means to release it, you have to hit this little paddle right here. And the insertion of your magazines, these are not actual P mags. Well, it's a P mag, but made for a G36. They have a different locking mechanism. When you put it in, you kind of have to give that little rock back to kind of get it all the way into place. Um, the first couple times I was used to an AR, I just kind of sh shoved it straight in there and uh, it didn't work. So make sure you get that little bit of a lock back to make sure it locks into place. Otherwise you're gonna get this thing just dropping on you and that's embarrassing. You, we know that happened to me with Travis Haley and we don't like to talk about it. So make sure you're doing the right thing there. So the G36 has a rail right here, right? So what the hell is going on right here? So I have the Knight's Armament backup sites slash rail system. So it has a little bit of Picatinny rail right here and uh, I have a front Knight's Armament site and a rear Knight's Armament site for backups. And they're actually very slick. They're phenomenal. Um, I did it because James Williamson had it on his. I like um, how it looks. I like how I'm able to reach the charging handle. A couple of people have informed me that this leads to weakness in the system due to not having that structural support from the top rail. James Williamson didn't agree. Um, some people do, some people don't. I don't know. Um, if it does or if it doesn't. Um, I have had a couple issues with this gun and we'll go ahead and we'll maybe possibly attribute to that. I can't say what the issues were caused by, but we'll talk about that. In the we'll talk about that right now. So what I had with this gun, first off, I broke an extractor about the first 400 rounds in. That happens. Um, poor heat treating or, or what have you. I just happened to break a lot of extractors. I broke a FAL extractor. I break AR-15 extractors all the time. Um, I had one break on this. I don't consider it a knock on his stuff. I just, stuff happens sometimes, guys. Um, you know, always have spare parts. To his credit, um, Tom immediately sent over a bunch of spare extractors and those extractors have ran fine with no problem. So I would like to say it's probably just a fluke or something along those lines. But an issue that I did have that was very interesting was I was shooting this and apparently what happened was somehow the operating rod broke um, or something along those lines, 
We're not really clear exactly what happened. But when it broke, it shoved itself down into the channel right here and gouged it really hard and jammed up the gun. Um, pretty much a catastrophic failure. Nothing happened to me. The gun failed uh, as it should have. But uh, it was interesting. I sent it back to Tommy Vilt. Um, he wasn't sure exactly what happened. He said at times things have uh, perhaps gotten caught in the piston rings and caused it to cant. We're not exactly sure how it occurred. Um, you know, I just honestly, uh, these things happen. I fired another. Um, so I put about another 800 rounds to this since I had it back and I haven't had any issues. And now uh, it originally broke at about 600 after I got the, got the extractor changed out on this particular platform. So it seems like I'm having issue after issue after issue. Um, and I would like to say, oh, it's a crappy gun. But I don't think that's the case. I think um, I'm just having weird shit. I push these guns kind of hard. And in this case, it just failed at very weird times. And the reason I don't think that it's that these guns are crappy is because there are a bunch of Tommy built uh, G36 T36s out there with 35,000, 40,000 40, rounds um, with you know your normal barrel cleanings, with your normal barrel changes and that type of stuff. But they're they're running fine. So I don't believe that this gun is terrible. I just think I'm having some bad luck with a couple things there um, because. The reputation seems to be that these run fine. And could it be due to the fact that I you know, changed out this rail? Did that cause the structural problem? Or is it the B&T rail? Or is it the fact that it's using this lower? God knows. I've changed a bunch of this shit on this rifle so much so that I feel like I can't say with um, good authority on what caused the failure to happen. But I just want to say that it did happen, although I don't put that as a knock against these guns. I think that they are top notch and top quality. All right, rear sight here. Um, I did have an Aimpoint T2 uh, on there. I swapped it out for this little bad boy that's from um, Armament Tech. They make the Elcan Spectre. Just wanted to test this thing out. I feel very Call of Duty-ish with this uh, wide open window, but those are nice optics. But in any case, moving back from there, I have an IDZ stock on here. There are multiple different stocks out there. Um, again, this is what James Williamson had, and I found it to be very comfortable. Now, the length of pull is a little bit short for what I would typically want, but uh, it doesn't work. You can raise up the cheek piece on these uh, if you have like a high optic, um, and then of course adjust this as you need. If you are wondering about length, so here is a collapsed Mark 18, and here is a collapsed G36. They are roughly the same length, of course, of the Mark 18 having a longer barrel length as it has a 10.3 barrel, and this is a 9.3 uh, approximately. So. They're roughly the same size. Sometimes with these short stroke gas piston guns, you have them very, very long, kind of like the AK. The AK is a very long gun. So ultimately, how does it feel to shoot? Um, not as smooth or as good as an AR-15. Um, definitely an interesting firearm to shoot and work with. Uh, I definitely prefer an AR-15. I'm definitely better than an AR-15. That being said, I've really enjoyed my time with the um, G36 or T36 from Tommy Built. I'm hoping to do the XM8 that he has out there. It's definitely interesting. You'll find the recoil impulse to be a little bit stiffer, but these are truly accurate and reliable weapons. Now, as far as is this ready for you know prime time, like military use and that type of thing? No, no. I think this is more of a uh, farm you have to if you want a G36 clone, since they're so hard to get. If you're military law enforcement and you really want to have a G36C, for whatever reason get that actual thing but this is definitely cool um, for those of us who can't easily buy those and want to have a g36 um, of some type or form so definitely a cool looking firearm and definitely a cool thing now there are a couple problems with the g36c um, the biggest being of course suppressor another thing is going to be rail space now i understand i'm i lost a lot of rail space here but besides that out front um, there's not a whole lot of areas to grip um, so if you want to have like a peck and a light, uh, kind of like a modern setup, it's definitely going to be more difficult to do. You're going to have to kind of do a little more shimming and moving around and stuff to make it work. So it's not ideal for me um, in a lot of cases. Uh, I find the Mark 18 or the AR-15 system to be much more adaptable for that type of use due to the ability to grip further out even when you have a peck on there. There's just not a whole lot of space there. I understand a lot of this is mitigated with um, longer uh, you know, G36s like the K and that type of thing. But for the C, understand your limitations that you're gonna be running into. Now, as with everything, guys, this looks really sick and cool. However, you're not gonna look cool or sick with this if you don't know how to shoot. So make sure that you get out there and get trained, guys. Um, Bear Solutions, Esoteric, Core Vision, uh, Pat McNamara, Tony Cowden, all these great guys out there looking to give you training to ensure that you know what you're doing. 
get out there and get that training, gentlemen. Thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate you. I'm back home in the Pacific Northwest, and I am so happy. Stay cool, guys. I got nothing else for you. All right, last thing I got for you guys. Um, take pride in your living area. So whether that be your uh, bedroom or your work area or whatever, uh, organize it. Have it nice. Have a flow to it. I know that a lot of times they say uh, genius lives in chaos and that type of thing. But there's a lot to be said for having a clean working environment in a clean house and that type of thing. It just makes you feel better. It's a great way to start the day. So highly recommended to keep your working areas clean. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your support, uh, especially as I've gone through these crazy times this last year and I've been moving around, going TDY and that type of stuff. You guys are awesome. Love you all. Take care of yourselves.